Welcome to the Bible Speak. I'm Brother Melvin. I'll be your teacher today, and this is my reader, Brother Brian. And uh, as always, we deal with titles and subjects in the Bible to give you an understanding of the Word of God. And the, today's lesson is titled, What is man that thou art mindful of him? What is man that thou art mindful of him? Brothers and sisters, uh, God is very mindful of this man because God had big plans for man, and he's still have big plans for man. And this big plan that he had for man, he wanted man to be just like him. And this is a word that seemed to be, feel, I feel for the saying, church, that you are trying to become God. You know, most people think that's blasphemy. But this is what God has for man. That's why he's mindful of this man. But I'm going to show you in this lesson that it's basically about being obedient. This is what the whole Bible is about. And that's what killed me when people say, well, we don't have to keep God's laws no more. Then I asked the question, what do we have to be obedient to? You got to be obedient. Because if you realize, I'm going to show you in the lesson that this life as man is just a test for you to become God. And that's what most people don't realize. This is just a test. And God wants to see, can you be obedient enough to be God? And this, this is what the whole Bible is really about. It's about being obedient. Now, what is man that God is mindful? Let's start this in Revelation, uh, the second chapter, and we're going to pick it up at verse 18. Go ahead. And unto the angel of the church of Thyatira write, These things saith the Son of God, who hath, the eye, hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. Go ahead. I know thy works in charity and service and faith, and thy patience and thy works and the last, and the last to be more than the first. Go ahead. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess. No, no, Jezebel is not a prophet according to the, what the world teaches. Jezebel is a streetwalker. Brother and sister, here it is written in the Bible, Jezebel was a prophetess. Mm -hmm. She was a lady preacher, not, have nothing to do with streetwalking. When people say, oh, you just a Jezebel. And everybody assume that's a streetwalker. But no, Jezebel was a lady preacher. Oops, sorry about that lady preacher. Go ahead and read. To teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Go ahead. Behold, I will cast her into a bed of them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation except they repent of their deeds. Go ahead. And I will kill her children with death. And all the churches shall know that I am he which searches the reins and hearts. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. Go ahead. But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan as they speak, I will put, I will put upon you none other burden. Go ahead. But that which ye have already hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. Now I read all that just to get down to that, that he that overcome, he going to give you power over the nation. But I'm going to show you that God ain't going to give you all his power. First you got to see is you going to be obedient. Read that next verse. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. Now, he want to put you over, over the nation, brothers and sisters. But in order to rule over the nation, you got, you got to prove that you can be obedient to God. Let's go into Psalms 8. Psalms 8, chapter. 
this is the whole thing. Can we be obedient to God's word? That's why you, you I, that's why man try his best to change this whole thing around. That you, the only something you have to do is believe. You don't have to be obedient no more. Just believe. Psalms 8 and verse 1. Go ahead. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Skip down to verse 3 and go ahead. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained. Go ahead. What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest now him? Now you ask the question, so what is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou visitest him? What is man that thou visit. Let's go and see what God said, who, who man's supposed to be. Let's hold your whole last part. We won't come back to it. But let's go to uh, Psalms 82. Psalm 82. We need to find out what is man. <clears throat> what God, since God the one created this man, let's find out what he say he is. Mm-hmm. Psalms 82 and verse 1. Psalm 82 and verse 1. Go ahead. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth among the gods. Now, who is all these gods that God's standing in the congregation with? Because we know in the Godhead, it's only two. But he say he's standing in the congregation, and he's judging among the gods. Skip down and read number six, verse 6. Go ahead. I have said you are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. Now, so now let me know, he's talking to somebody else other than because he said, you all, ye are all God, and you are all the children of the Most High. Let's go to John 10, because some people say, well, he might be talking to angels there. Because the angels are called sons of God. But let's go into John 10, and let's see who was he talking to. Let's go to John 10. This is Jesus talking to these Pharisees. And look what he said here. John 10, and we're going to pick it up at verse 30. Go ahead. I and my Father are one. Now, people get all confused on that. I and my father are one. They one minded. Go ahead. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my father. For which of those works do ye stone me? And the Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. And because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Now he's saying, You a man, are you making yourself God? Now go ahead and read. Jesus answered them, is it not written in your law, he I says, said? It is not written in your law. He said, go ahead. Ye are God. That ye are God. And if he called them gods unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken. Now, people need to read that, that the scripture cannot be broken. Then if God called them God, what are they? They are God. That's what God called. He said the scripture cannot be broken. That's what he's trying to show these Pharisees. But look what he, Now, then he kind of go off and kind of explain what he's talking about here. Uh, uh, go ahead. Say ye of him whom the Father has sancti- sanctified and sent into the world. Thou blasphemest because I said, I am the Son of God. See, people understood back then, if you call yourself the Son of God, then you are God. Because if you're a son of man, what are you? Man. You're man. If you're a son of a dog, what are you? You're dog. So why, when you say you're a son of God, people don't understand that you're saying you're God. But I'm going to show you it's a process now. It's a process in truly becoming son and daughters of God. Go ahead. If I do not the works of my father, believe me now not. Now he ain't got into the works that he's doing. Go ahead. But if I do, though ye believe not me, believe the works that ye may know and believe that the father is in me and I in him. Now he, see, you notice now he in chase that the father's in him and he's in the father. What's, mm-hmm. What is this? I'm going to show you that's simply the word, brothers and sisters. Let's go to Romans 8. Romans 8, we'll read one verse. Romans 8. And verse 14. Romans 8 and verse 14. Go ahead. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Now that's what Jesus was telling. Jesus was speaking to them that he is the son of God, not from being uh, uh, the son of God coming in, in the flesh. But he was speaking from man's point of view that I am the son of God. Because what was Jesus led by? He was led by, that's what he was saying, the Father's in me. This word is in me that I'm being led by. That's what makes me the son of God. Mm-hmm. He wasn't talking about he was God manifest in the flesh. He was referring to speaking from a man's point of view. Now, let's go back to John 6. Go back to John 6. Pick it up at verse 51. John 6 and 51. Go ahead. 
I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Now, go ahead. The Jews, therefore, strove among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Skip down to verse uh, 61, because they was confused about this, and they, what Jesus was saying. 61, go ahead. When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Does this offend you? Skip well, down to uh, 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 verse 63 and read that. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Now, didn't we just read, oh, as you led by the spirit of God? What spirit you got to be led by? You got to be led by this word, brothers and sisters. That's the spirit that's in you. That's the spirit that leads you. That's the spirit when you, get to, when you, when you start to lie, you know the word said, thou shall not lie. Then when you get to committing adultery and you... The word said, no, you're being led by the word, brothers and sisters. That's what leads you, this word. Let's go into uh, uh, Genesis 6. Genesis 6 and verse 1. Genesis 6 and 1. Okay, go ahead. And it came to pass when men began to multiply in the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair. And they took them, them wives of all which they chose. Now, now, now this is something that that's been taught wrong for years. They said when, when the son of God saw the daughters of men and that they was fair, they took them for wife. Now, some people teach that these are the sons of God because they go in, in, Job, in Job, the first chapter, and they said when the sons of God, which is angels, came before God, so they assume that this is angels that cohabitated with, with, the, sons, with the daughters of men. But I'm going to show you, brothers and sisters, Let's go into Luke, the third chapter. <clears throat> because somewhere along the way, we don't know that man, that's why I read earlier, what is man? God said, ye are God. Mm -hmm. Let's go into John, Luke, Luke, the third chapter. And we're going to run down and see who, just, just do a, a lineage back to, since we know Jesus is truly the son of God. So we're going to do a, a lineage back check on Jesus. Uh, Luke 3 and 23. Go ahead. And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being as was supposed the son of Joseph, which was the son of Heli, which was the son of Mathat, which was the son of Levi, which was the son of Melchi, which was the son of Jana, which was the son of Joseph. Uh, what verse was that? 23. Now we're at 24. Go ahead. Which was the son of Matthias, which was the son of Amos, which was the son of Nahum, which was the son of Elsley. Esli, which was the son of Nasia. Skip down to verse 31. We're just running this lineage backwards. Go ahead. Which was, which was the son of Melia, which was the son of Menan, which was the son of Methatha, which was the son of Nathan, which was the son of David. Go ahead. Which was the son of Jesse, which was the son of Obed, which was the son of Boaz, which was the son of Salmon, which was the son of Nasan. Skip down to verse 37. Go ahead which was the son of Methuselah, which was the son of Enoch, which was the son of Jared, which was the son of Melilil, which was the son of Canaan, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. Now, which was the son of God? So all these other names, if you go through this whole lineage, of which, was, which was Adam, which was the son of God. In other words, you start going grandson of God, great-grandson of God, great-great-grandson of God. These are, all these are the sons of God. So now let's go back to Genesis, because now you know who are the sons of God. They are man, not angels, because I can show you in this Bible that angels don't cohabitate with man. But that's the bad teaching that we've been taught for years. Uh, now let's go back to Genesis 6 and pick it up at verse 3. Genesis 6 and verse 3. Go ahead. And the Lord said, my spirit should not always strive with man, for that he also is flesh. Now, he said, my spirit ain't going to fly, strive with man because he's also flesh. Go ahead. Yet his days shall be in 120 years. Now, let's go and see what God is talking about. He said, my spirit ain't going to always uh, 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 strive with man. What do we just read the spirit is? Hmm. The word. So, yeah, in other words, simply what he's saying, my word ain't going to always strive with man because what this, what this really talking about the sons of God, which was self, 
kids and Adam's kids, they start to look upon Cain's kid, which God had disinherited. That's why he is referred to Cain's kid as the son, uh, the daughters of man. Because yeah. that's the same thing if you go back to Job, when the, the sons of God showed up, then they said, <clears throat> Satan showed up also. He was, Satan is an angel just like the rest of them. But when God disinherited you, he takes you back to what, you, you know, he don't, you're not classified as his son no more. He disinherited Cain. So when the, 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 the sons of Adam start to look upon Cain's daughters and start to marry these kids, he realized, say, hey, my word ain't going to do it. Ain't gonna, ain't gonna, these people ain't going to keep my word. That's all he's saying. Let's go into Romans 8 chapter. Let me show you what I'm talking about. <clears throat> Romans 8 chapter. Because that's all he's talking about. They ain't going to keep my word. Romans 8 and 1. Go ahead. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now, uh, then he said that man, our flesh, in other words, you got a worldly mind who walk. There's no condemnation in those that walk after Christ Jesus, who walk not after the worldly thing, but after the word. Because that's what the spirit is. Mm -hmm. Skip down to verse 5 and go ahead. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Go ahead. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Wait, the carnal mind is enmity against God? What, and what else? For it is not subject to the law of God. What law? We ain't under the law no more. Yeah. See, that's what people <laughs> teach. Say, we, he, but, but whose mind is not? Uh, uh, read that again. Read that first. Start, start back at the top. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So the carnal mind is not subject to the law of God. So that means it must be some laws there, right? The carnal mind, the one that don't deal with the law of God. So if you got a carnal mind, that's why you don't have to keep the law. Go ahead. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. If the Word of God dwell in you, go ahead. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Now, those, if you don't have the Spirit of Christ, you is none of Christ. You ain't none. Of, you ain't got nothing to do with it if you don't have his Word. Let's go to Matthew 11. Show you something. When Jesus called, he, uh, uh, when Jesus showed up, he referred to himself as, as man. Matthew 11, and we're going to read one verse. Matthew 11 and verse 19. Okay, go ahead. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Behold, a man gluttonous and a wine bibber, and friends of publicans and sinners. But wisdom is justified of her children. Now, when Jesus showed up, what did he call himself? The Son of Man, because he was man. Mm -hmm. And he showed up drinking, and, and behold, why all of a sudden now is somebody drinking? They the wicked person in the world, but they, but they didn't say nothing about Jesus was getting drunk, you know. But they, he showed up. They say this guy had a few drinks every now and then. Somebody offered him a drink. He said, "I don't mind if I do." Right. But the, but the key is something they said. But wisdom is the justifier of the truth. In other words, the knowledge that Jesus had justified him. But he called himself the Son of Man because that's what he was. Let's go on. Let's 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 go on. Let's, let's go. Uh, let's go to Matthew 19. Because Jesus, when he makes himself, when he was in this flesh, there was some so good or great about it. Matthew uh, 19 and verse 16. Go ahead. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good things shall I do that I may and may have eternal life? They call him good master. What did Jesus say? Go ahead. And he said unto him. Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Now, he, he told this guy if he want to get eternal life, what he got to do? Keep the commandments. Keep the commandments. You know, people like to throw that in God. Jesus said you got to keep the commandments. But I, what we went there for, I had to clarify that. But we went there, Jesus wouldn't even accept being called good in this flesh and blood body. Because he said, it's only one good, and that is God. But I, the key sum he told his man, if you want eternal life, what you got to do? Keep the commandment. Now let's go back to uh, Psalms 82. 
Because this man took a great fall, brothers and sisters. And what, what God is trying to do with this man, he's trying to recover this man. 82 and verse 2. 82 and verse 2. Go ahead. How long will ye judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Go ahead. Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. Now, that's what man's supposed to be doing. Go ahead. They know not. Neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. Now, why is all earth is out of course? Because man, well, God didn't create this man to die. Man figured out the way to die. Go ahead. I have said ye are gods, and all of you are the children of the Most High. But ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Now, what happened? He said, I created you to live forever. But you, since you chose the person of the wicked, what's going to happen to you? You're going to die like men. So who was he talking to here? He was talking to men. He wasn't talking to the angels. He was talking to man here. Let's go to Genesis, uh, the second chapter. Let me show you what he's talking Let me show you the first person. They chose the person of the wicked. Genesis 2 and verse 7. Genesis 2 and verse 7. Go ahead. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. Now, you notice Eden put no soul in man. Man became a living soul. You, you are the soul. So when somebody cut off your hand, he just cut the hand off your soul. Ain't no soul inside of you, brothers and sisters. That's just bad teaching. You are the soul. Go ahead. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight, and good for food, and the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now, it was trees in there that you eat with your mouth to consume your appetite. Then it was trees, two trees in the garden that you eat to consume your mind. That was the tree of life and the tree of knowledge and good and evil. Skip down to verse 16 and go ahead. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Now, he gave these guys a, a commandment. Say, so you can't eat of this tree. Let's see what they, uh, I told you this lesson about obedience. Let's see what they obedient. Go into Genesis 3 and pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said... Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Go ahead. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to clarify something right away because it's, it's a shame that people's big old grown preachers still think that Adam and Eve ate from an apple. Uh, he either got some off a tree. Brothers and sisters, the, the tree... Is the devil here, or Satan. That's, what, that's who the, he, God had told him, don't deal with the devil. They didn't, they ate the fruit of lies, brothers and sisters. That's, that's why he said, uh, the fruit of man's heart, he, he'll speak. In other words, the words they ate, that's what they ate, brothers and sisters. It's about time that we learn that they did not eat an apple. I don't know how they come up with an apple. They could have had any fruit if you don't choose a fruit. What, what's so special about an apple? But this is the lie that's been taught for years and years. And brothers and sisters, the tree of life was God, and the tree of knowledge and evil is the devil. Plain and simple. You don't believe me? Go in uh, Revelation, the, uh, the 12th chapter, the ninth verse. It's right there. It gives you all the devil's titles. Go ahead. Four. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Now he told him, that God is lying. You ain't going to die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Go ahead. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Now what happened when she heard these words, she, it was interesting to her. And she took these words to her husband. She had these words and she took it to Adam. And Adam accepted these words. Should have told her, hey, didn't God tell us not to deal with that? What happened to obedience? Mm -hmm. 
Look what happens when you don't be obedient. Skip down to verse 17. Go ahead. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Go ahead. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. Now, because they was unbeaten, obe- disobedient, this is what God brought on this man. This is the fall of man. Man is fallen right here. Go ahead. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Now, what did Adam bring in? He brought in death. Let's go into Romans 5 and let's read that. Romans 5. For being disobedient. Didn't he just say if you accept a person, you're going to die like man? Who's that? Who's that? Man. Let's go to Romans 5 and verse 12. Romans 5 and verse 12. Go ahead. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world. And what followed that? And death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Now, that's what disobedience brought in. Now, how can this man, God didn't create this man to die. He created this man to live forever. That's why he was mindful of this man because he had something he wanted this man to do. He wanted this man to be over the works of his hand. Let's go to, um, back to Genesis 1. And let's, let me show you something, what, what God was doing with this man. Genesis 1 I'm going to show you how God was setting this thing up. You have to pay attention to how he was setting it up. Genesis 1 and verse 11. Go ahead. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. Now you see, after his kind, skip down to verse 21 and read it. Go ahead. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind and every winged fowl after his kind, and God saw that it was good. Skip down to verse 24. Everything he's making after his kind. Go ahead. And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beasts of the earth after his kind, and it was so. Go ahead. And God made the beasts of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and God saw that it was good. Now, see, God is trying to show this man that everything is made after his kind. Go ahead. Now, let's not even make man. Go ahead. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. See, he changed the strip a little bit. He didn't make man after his kind because man is not God yet. But that's what God had planned for this man. But first of all, he got to see you obedient enough to become God. Mm-hmm. Now, what verse was that? 26. Go ahead. So God created man in his own image. and the image of God created he him, male and female, created he them. Now, he created them in his image, not after they can. Skip down to verse 31. Go ahead. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. Now, Go ahead. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. Now, everything that God made, even this man was good until this man uh, uh, accepted the person of the wicked. Let's go into uh, Psalm 8. Let's go back to Psalm 8 right quick. Psalm 8. And we're going to pick it up at verse 4. Psalm 8 and verse 4. Psalm 8 and verse 4. Go ahead. What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? Go ahead. For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast, cr- and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Now see what he said. He made this man a little lower than the angels, and crowned him with glory and honor. Go ahead. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. And put everything under man's feet. Everything. Go ahead. All sheep and oxen, yea, and the beasts of the field, the fowl of the air and the fish of the sea. And whatsoever passes through the paths of the seas. Now, now we talking about the animals and the beasts and stuff. But then we read early that God made the heaven. Mm-hmm. So if He put man over the work of His hand, then God make the whole universe. So if man go be over, He just didn't put man over the fishes of the seas and all. God put the, created this man to be over the works of His hand. But let's go into Hebrew. 
the first chapter. And let's see. Let's look at some. Hebrews, the first chapter. Paul spoke about the same thing. Hebrews, the first chapter. And we're going to pick it up at verse 13. Hebrews thir- uh, 1 and verse 13. Go ahead. But to which of the angels said he at any time sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? See, I wanted to read that to let you know he never told the angel what job that he had for man is not the same because people think when you die you come a little old angel. No, but he said which other mm-hmm. angel, but he had another job for man. Skip down to uh, go into uh, the second chapter and pick it up at verse 5. Go ahead. For unto the angels he hath he not put in subjection the world to come whereof we speak. See, the angels ain't going to be in charge of the world. He created man for that, to be able to work of his hand. Go ahead. But one in a certain place testified, saying, What is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou visitest him? Go ahead. Thou madest him a little lower than the angels, Thou crownest him with glory and honor, and didst set him over the works of thy hand. That's which is that stars, the moon, and everything. God created man's supposed to be over all of that. Go ahead. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet, for in that he put all in subjection under him, he left nothing that is not put under him. Go ahead. But now we see, not yet all things put under him. Now let's see he's, he's telling you, this man, everything he put under. First of all, God put you in this life to be a test. See, can you be obedient enough to be over the works of his hand? That's what most people don't realize. This life that we live in is just a test to see, can you be obedient? For God, for I turn you out, if you not, if you can't handle a hundred dollars, why should I let you manage a million? Right. This is what God said. If you can't be obedient to the little thing, I'm not going to set you over the work of my hand. So whatever people tell you that you don't have to, uh, all you have to do is believe in God, No, you got to be obedient to God. Let's go into Luke 15. Luke 15 and verse uh, verse 11. Brothers and sisters, you got to be obedient to God. That's what what is man that he might but he he wants this man, he wants to seek in this man be obedient. Because I'm going to show you, once this man messed up, God sent somebody, and this guy was on the money. He was obedient. Luke 15, and we're going to pick it up at verse 11. Luke 15 and verse 11. 11. Go ahead. And he said, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that followed to me. Now, I'm, sure, I'm showing you in this parable, man was created to become God, but I'm going to show you once this man fell, he wasn't worthy enough to be called God no more. Go ahead. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together, gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. Go ahead. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. Now he been he didn't spend his money. Now he now he in want. Go ahead. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. Go ahead. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. Now this man, this man fell so low that he finna eat the the food of, of the pig. And this is talk, this I'm sure this this one man represents all man right here, because this is what happened to man. Man and fell so low. Go ahead. And when he came to himself, he said, "How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger?" Now, when he came to his right mind, so wait, man, what, what am I, what am I doing? I'm finna eat the, with these hogs, but my father's rich, and this is what this man got to do when he realized, what am I doing? Hmm. If I want eternal life, I got to turn from my wicked way, and seek back my father. This is because this man and fell. He got to turn back to God, and this is what this guy is doing. Go ahead. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father. I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Now, see what he was saying? I'm no more worthy to be called a son. And you weren't called a son of God. You were called man. You went from being son of God into being man. Go ahead. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion 
and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Go ahead. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. See, now you see what he happened? And God don't call us. We are man. But God is have compassion. He gives us the opportunity to come back and repent. And once again, we can be his son. But until you do that, you are the son. Then we read earlier, if you ain't led by the spirit of God, you're not his son. Who don't have that spirit? Or he's that word in you. You are none of his. Mm-hmm. So this is what happened to this man. This man fell. Let's go back to, let's go to Psalm 49. Psalm 49. Something had to happen. Once this man fell, Psalm 49, we're going to pick it up at verse, verse 1, 49 and 1. Because why is God so mindful of this man? Because he had a job for this man to do. And he wanted to make this man just like him. 49 and 1. Go ahead. Hear this, all ye people. Give ear, all ye inhabitants of the world, both low and high, rich and poor together. Now listen to this guy. Go ahead. My mouth shall speak of wisdom. And the meditation of my heart shall be of understanding. Uh, uh, skip down to verse um, 6 and go ahead. They that trust in their wealth and boast themselves in the multitude of their riches, none of them can by any means redeem his brother nor give to God a ransom for him. See, now that's what I got a little problem with these, these preachers that deal with prosperity. You go to church, the only something they talk about is prosperity, <clears throat> prosperity. But he's telling you right here, ain't nothing wrong with having that. If you got money, good. But when I come to church, I want to learn about salvation because he's letting you know here, all that wealth you got, not one of you, I don't care how much money you got, not one of you can redeem your brother. So go ahead. And what verse was that? Oh, seven. Go ahead. For the redemption of their soul is precious, and it ceases forever, that he should still live forever and not see corruption. Now, he had to send a guy, since all these rich people on the earth, ain't none of us could redeem his brother. So now he got to come up with a guy that can do this. What verse was that? That was nine. Go ahead. For he seeth that wise men die, likewise a fool and the brutish person perish, and leave their wealth to others. Now, that's a big deal about the wealth, ain't it? and you want to spend your whole life trying to get well, you're going to die and leave it, brothers and sisters. So you sitting in front of a preacher that all they preach about, you need money. You need, yes, the church do need money to operate. But the preacher should be teaching the people about salvation. You know, but this guy here came to redeem his brother. Let's go to uh, 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 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy 2. 1 Timothy 2. <clears throat> And we're going to pick it up at verse 3. Because this guy had to come and give a ransom. Let's see who this was. First Timothy 2 and verse 3. Go ahead. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Now, that's a big word, to come into the knowledge of the truth. Somewhere in the church, somewhere knowledge got lost at the doorstep. They don't want to deal with knowledge no more in the church. They want to scream and holler and jump and shout. And what's going to get you into God's kingdom is knowledge, brothers and sisters, that you come to the knowledge of the truth. Go ahead. For there's one God. There's one God. And one mediator between God and men, the man, Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Now, Jesus had to come and ransom this man because this man had fell off the horse and Jesus came and died for this man. So get back on the horse. You got to ride again. He, he didn't come and say, I'm going to do the riding for you. You just stand and watch. No. In other words, what I'm saying is God came and set you back on track and said, now keep my law. In my stat, didn't he tell? Didn't he? Didn't the young? Didn't he tell the young man when he came to him? Said, "Good master, what, what, what must I do to get eternal life?" He said, "Keep the commandments." Let's go into Romans five. Romans, go back to Romans five. Because God is mindful of this man because He wants this man to be able to works of His hand. But He got you got to show God that you can be obedient. Romans five and verse six. Romans five and verse six. Go ahead. For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Now, that's what Jesus came and did. He died for us. We was ungodly. Go ahead. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet peradventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. Go ahead. 
But God commended his love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for now, us. Jesus came and died for us. Most people don't even realize that Jesus was God. He stopped being God to become man, to show this man how to become God. But man, only some man know how to do is be wicked. So God, Jesus, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to come on, come on and put on this flesh to show this man how to become God. Mm-hmm. And, and, and you got to pay attention to what Jesus did when he showed up. He didn't come in here making deals and playing. He walked in obedience. Even at the cross when he didn't want to accept that death, what did he say? Not my will, but thy will. So that let me know Jesus didn't want to die, but he had to be what? Obedient. Mm-hmm. That's what he want. That's what he come to show this man. Hey, these laws are not too hard to keep. You just got to want to keep them. Just be obedient. Jesus was man just like you and I. He didn't break not one law. Mm-hmm. That's what he come to show up. Say, man, you want to become me? God, then that's what you got to do. Skip down to... Um, what verse did you stop at? That was eight. You read eight? Mm-hmm. Skip down to verse 10 and go ahead. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Go ahead. And not only so, but we also join God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Now you received the atonement. In other words, Jesus made atonement for your sins. And, Man, I'm going to give you another shot at this thing. Because God did not create man to die. God created man to be able to work his hand. If you won't be able to work to God's hand, then you got to live forever because God's work is forever. Let's go into Hebrews, the second chapter. Let's look at, the, let's look at Jesus when he showed up. Hebrews, the second chapter, in verse, verse 9. Hebrews 2 and verse 9. Go ahead. But we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. So what he's saying is Jesus was made man, a little lower than angels. Man is made a little lower than angels. Jesus took on flesh and blood to do what? To be, for he can suffer, taste death for every man. He just didn't die for a certain group. He died for every man. Go ahead. Uh, what verse was that? Dan? Nine. Go ahead. For it became him for whom all are all things, and by whom are all things, and bringing many sons unto glory. Now what he's going to do, he's going to bring many sons unto glory. That's why Jesus showed up to show you. Listen, what is it, read that, read, finish that verse. To make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. Now if the captain, what do the captain, what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to follow your captain. If your captain showed up, and as his custom was, if he went into the synagogue on the, on the Sabbath day, what day, if you follow your captain, what day you supposed to go in the synagogue? On the same day. Mm-hmm. If your captain is going to lead you and tell you that his kingdom, gonna, he going to sit on David's throne, then what? and he said, and his children going to sit on the throne with him, why are you trying to go to heaven? Why aren't you trying to do the thing that the captain is doing? I'm going to let you know your captain, he didn't eat no uh, unclean food. But people don't realize Jesus, he said, hey, I come to show you how to become me. Mm-hmm. And if you want to become me, you got to do the things that I do because I'm your captain. Follow me. And you will become just like me. Because what did Jesus, Jesus was God, he became man, and what, he, what is he now? He's back to God. That's what he come to show this man. He said, man, that's why I'm mindful of you, because I had some plan for you, and if you choose to be obedient, I'm going to make you just like me. Go ahead. 11. For both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all of one, for which cause he is not ashamed to be called to call them brethren. Now, God can't call you his brother along with this man is in sin. And once this man uh, put away sin, then then you can be called truly a son of God. Uh, uh, skip uh, verse 14. You got to read on down to verse 14. What verse was that? That was 11. Go ahead. Skip to 14. No, read. Go ahead and keep Saying, going. I will declare thy name unto my brethren. 
In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. Go ahead. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children which God hath given me. Go ahead. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil. Now you see what God did when he showed up? He said he took on the took on flesh and blood. In other words, he became man to show this man that it's just simple how to become God. One little simple sum, just be obedient. Ain't that simple? Mm -hmm. All you got to do is read God's word and do what it say. And if you do that, I'm going to make you just like me. You ain't going to be in my image no more. You're going to be after my kind. Is that hard? But we want to make it so easy that all we got to do is believe. You keep on believing. <laughs> I guarantee you, you're going to be in that lake of fire if you just keep believing and not doing. Because the Bible said, Satan believing that is one God and he trembled. But this man think all you have to do is just believe. Now, brothers and sisters, you got to keep God's commandment. You got to be obedient. That's why God is mindful of this man. He's trying to show this man, hey, man, all you got to do is, is be obedient. Keep my commandment. Keep my word. And if you do that, I'm going to make you just like me. Is that, is that something hard for a man to do? Let's go into Romans, Romans the 8th chapter. Romans 8. God is mindful of this man, but I told you this lesson... <clears throat> It's really, it's, it's trying to tell you that you got to be obedient to God's word. So if you're in a church where they're teaching you, you don't have to keep God's commandment, then what do you have to be obedient to? Because God's word, that's, this is this whole thing is about. Adam couldn't be obedient, right? The children of Israel, he gave him a law. He could, they couldn't be obedient. In other words, every son that God had couldn't be obedient. So he finally, uh, Adam was his son, right? Couldn't be obedient. What happened? Death. What happened to Israel? Israel is God's uh, son, right? The children of Israel represent God's son. What was they? Disobedience. All these people showed up was disobedience, which was God's son. Adam, Israel was God's son. Then finally he sent Jesus, which stopped being God and became man to show this man, hey, why is y'all keep missing the point? All you got to do is be obedient. That's why I told you when Jesus got ready to die on the cross, that wasn't something he wanted to do. He tried to get out of it. He said, Lord, if possible, can this cup pass from me? And God told him, no, <laughs> you know that ain't possible. And then Jesus said, okay, not my will, but thy will. And this is what, that's the key to man becoming God right there. It's not your will. I, my will might be, I want to do a whole lot of things. But when you become a servant of God, that's why Paul referred to the prisoner of Christ. Because, you know, a prisoner don't get an opportunity to do his will. In the prison, they tell you what time to get up, and they tell you what time to go to bed. Now, if you're a servant of God, that's what God do. But you've got to be obedient. This is what the whole thing is about, this whole God thing of going to church this is what the word teaches you to do, to be, is to be obedient to God's word. Romans 8 and verse 14. Go ahead. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Now, you see what it says? Many are led by the word of God, they are the sons of God. Now, that's the first step on your process of becoming God. You've got to be led by this word. You've got to believe this word, and you've got to be obedient to it. In other words, you've got to be led by it. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Now, go ahead. The spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Now, we are the children of God if we keep his word but I'm going to show you, if you continue to keep this word, then you'll go into another process. Go ahead. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, 
if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be, glorif- be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Now, like you were saying, this little suffering that we have to go through now, you know, a little suffering, Jesus suffered big time for us. But the little suffering we have to go through, he said it ain't even worthy to be compared to the glory that we're going to re- receive if you continue in this suffering. <clears throat> so why do people teach that, you know, you're serving a God, don't nothing supposed to happen to you? Brothers and sisters, that's, that's false precept. That's why some people fall off the edge when stuff happens to them, when family members die, because people teach all this false teaching that when you are serving a God, everything, flowers blooming, birds singing. That's not what the Word said. He said you're going to suffer. I'm going to tell you something to suffer when you truly, you want to know if you're truly dealing with the Word when your family start disinheriting you. They don't want to deal with you. Somehow they forget that you're in the family. And I always tell people, if you want to be a servant of God and you want to deal with this world, the word the way it's written, then you better realize you ain't going to have a whole lot of friends. That's the suffering that he's talking about. You have to suffer that people talk about you. You the crazy one at work. You the crazy one in the family. This is the stuff that you have to suffer when you're dealing with the word of God. But he said, the suffering, that, that you know what, you're willing to put up with all of this because the glory that's going to be revealed is worth more than this little suffering that we're doing now. What verse was that? It was 18. Go ahead. For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. That's why we're taking all this suffering, because we're waiting to be truly be the sons of God. I'm talking, in all mean, we will be God. That's what they're afraid to say in church. They're afraid to say that man... God is mine for this man because God created this man to become just like him. In other words, to be him just like God. Oh, brother, you blaspheme. Well, why do you keep calling yourself the son of God? He told you if you see when the Pharisees approached him and said, you say I'm blaspheming because I call myself a son of God. And the Pharisees realized by him calling himself a son of God that he was making himself God. Ain't blaspheme, brothers and sisters. If you realize what great prize that God has set up for you. Maybe you'll be more mindful of serving this word and try to get some understanding. God has created you to become God. That's something big. Skip down to verse verse uh, uh, 21 and go ahead. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Now, what is this corruption called flesh and blood? We're decomposed, brothers and sisters. If we are delivered from this, then what are we? You can't be man no more because man died. He said, but we're going to be delivered from that. Skip down to verse 23 and go ahead. And uh, and not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. First fruit of the Spirit. Go ahead. Even we ourselves, grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. Now, what he's talking about there is something that they didn't get all confused as born again. We were born once in man's family, born again in God's family. That's the, re- the redemption of our body. Go to Philippians 2, and let's look at Jesus in this whole thing. Philippians 2 and verse 5. Philippians 2 and verse 5. Philippians 2 and 5. <clears throat> Go ahead. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Now, he's telling you to let this mind because you got to think like God. you got to have a godly mind. Go ahead. Who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Now, once you become son of God, you're going to be equal to God. You're going to have all power, brothers and sisters. That's what he created, man. Now you can be over the works of God's hand. Go ahead. But made himself of no reputation. And took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Go ahead. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death. Now that that word is obedient. Go ahead. Even the death of the cross. Go ahead. Wherefore God also have highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Now once you go through this process in Revelation, he said he's going to give you another name. 
just like he did Jesus, because the, the process that we're doing is the same what Jesus is doing. Jesus just come to show this man that God is mindful of me. He got big plans for you. Verse 12, go ahead. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. You got to work this thing out. Skip down to verse 15 and go ahead. That ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Go ahead. Holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Now you neither labored in vain, brothers and sisters. You see what he's saying here? That you can, in the day of Christ, that when Jesus returns, you know, we're going to be just like him. He's going to change our vile body to fashion our, to fashion be like his body. And no longer will we be made in his image. We will be after his kind because the purpose of God creating man, the reason he's mindful for this man, because he created this man to be God, be God, to be over the works of his hand, over the sun, the, sun, the moon, this whole universe. That's why he's mindful for a man. And brothers and sisters, I think that's real important. If God that been mindful for you, you should try to strive to become God. This is what this walk is about. I hope you get some out of this lesson. I thank you for your time. The Israel of God has several books, an overview of the Feast of the Lord. Man has his holidays, and God has his holy days. What is the purpose of man's holidays, and what are the origins? God's holy days are his plan for the salvation of man. For your copy, contact the Israel of God to get an overview of God's plan for man's salvation outlined in his feast days. The Four Winds of Heaven is a reference book and includes unfulfilled prophecies and their dire consequences for the near future of the earth and all its inhabitants. In this book, the prophecies of the Bible from Babylon to Armageddon are carefully documented and explained with historical names, dates, color illustrations, and an analysis of the rapture, saved, and born again. Read the dietary law to find out the foods God intended for man's consumption. We've all heard the saying, you are what you eat. If that's the case, we're all full of unclean and unhealthy things. We've been taught that we can eat anything we want as long as we pray over it or give thanks to God for it. If that's the case, then why did God give us a dietary law in the Bible and make this statement? To make a difference between the clean and the unclean, that which should be eaten and should not be eaten. For more information, call 1-800-96-BIBLE. We would like to invite you to join us on the Sabbath Day Live via the Internet. Log on to our website, which is www.theisraelofgod.com. Click on the link Sabbath Day Live on our homepage. You will need Windows Media Player to view our program. We stream live twice every Sabbath at 10 a.m. and 1.30 p.m. Central Time. Also, if you're in the Chicago area, please feel free to join us at our study class located at 2515 East 75th Street here in Chicago. Thank you.